Here I'd like to show you what I did with a Prezi. Um, first we're talking about vocabulary. This is extremely important for what I do uh, with social studies and ESL. So first, we are graphic organizers. So I try to compile something uh, visual. Uh, we've got definition, word maps. Over here, What's the category, comparison term, what are some examples, what's it like, properties, illustrations. Uh, logos and pictomaps. Here I've got landforms and various aspects of those. Uh, when it comes to pictomaps, I chose something I found online for cats, which I don't really understand, but I guess this is a pictomap. Uh, semantic feature analysis. That's more than likely over here. A semantic map, uh, you can see I already have. Word walls, there we go. Um, also, here's the, uh, I think this is the feature analysis right here. Then we go to basic morphology, okay. Um, the study of word formation, affixes, prefixes, and suffixes, compound words, contractions, and root words. So here are some examples of compound words. Here you can see several different suffixes and affixes and intensity, invisible, duration, capable, undisputed, sympathize, and relationship. Contraction worksheet. Um, I think this is really helpful for ESL students. With the native speakers, most of them know this, but a lot of them do not know that in formal writing that you never include it. Um, so this I found really interesting, uh, root words. This helps with SAT, uh, ACT, and various other standardized tests. This also helps with reading in general. Um, some of the students might be interested in foreign languages. Uh, some will need Latin for medical terminology, uh, scientific terminology, etc. We are using context clues. So it's very similar to what we just looked at, but just first of all, okay, so we have direct definitions and explanations. I've helped students study for the TOEFL and the IELTS, and some, in many of the qu uh, questions, they have to know how to read what a referent is. Okay, so I think direct definitions and explanations help. Explanations through example. Here you see a teacher um, conducting an activity. It, it definitely helps. For me, when I learned vocabulary, I can distinctly remember how I, when I thought of the word, I could actually hear the teacher or I could see the teacher doing something. So I try to keep my teaching as lively as possible. Um, Lively so that they can remember it. Lively also so they don't fall asleep. Uh, words in a series. Um, you can do this if you want. A synonyms or restatement. Here, it, like I said, synonyms and antonyms. Uh, compare and contrast. Here we got a Venn diagram for polar bears and panda bears. I think you can do this with practically any term or any uh, pair of terms. Uh, familiar expressions, that also helps. Um, figures of spe speech, so similes, metaphors, personifications, alliterations, onomatopoeia, uh, hyperboles, idioms. Word relationships, so like context clues, we're talking about antonyms, synonyms, and figurative languages. Language, but we're also talking about homophones, homographs, and multiple meanings. With ESL teachers or ESL students, this is extremely important because half the time when they're listening, they have to know that it's from the context. So I've got examples here, eight and eight, made and made. Then we've got homophones. Uh, oh, we already did homophones. Homonyms. So the spruce tree. To spruce up, suit yourself, wore a suit. Okay, then we also have to deal with homographs, which are the same spelling, different pronunciation, different meaning. So 
uh, to desert in a desert. So all of these are really, really confusing. I've, I've noticed from observing high school students that even though I had assumed that ESL students would need this more than native speakers, I'm convinced that this is also necessary for a lot of the native speaking students. Um, I think it depends on their educational level. It depends on what neighborhood and what school district. Extending an interest in vocabulary, so providing students with concrete experiences. I could ask the students to do something like this, like a war reenactment. Um, I've already stated it's kind of difficult to give students these kind of opportunities in social studies, but there's plenty of literature online. I'm sure I can find some. Show videos to experience uh, vicariously. So documentaries help. Uh, when I was teaching British and American cultural studies in the Czech Republic, I set up a YouTube account with several videos for the students to watch to help them with the subject matter that we were dealing with. Um, I'm not sure too many of them looked at it, but it's out there. If they want to, they can. Okay, so encourage reading and explore etymology. So peace, love, etymology, and here we go. The, these students definitely look like they're eager to read. So teaching vocabulary. Okay, so we need to identify the essential vocabulary for each word, have students see it, say it, hear it, write it. Uh, for me, this is how I've actually, my order is more see it, write it, say it, and then hear it. Uh, people learn differently, and that needs to be taken into consideration. So describe and explain meaning, have the students work with the word, have students describe and explain meaning, develop or have students develop non-linguistic representations, provide deep, meaningful practice, have students discuss the word, and you can also have the students play games. So that is my Prezi for vocabulary.